Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Guillermo. Uh, I come from Umena in Belgium and yeah, I'll be showing you uh, something that we've been working on with some of our, our partners. Um, it's my first time here at Moot and it's very exciting to be joining you. Uh, I've been discussing a lot uh, with multiple members of the, of the audience and a topic that has come out a lot are competencies. I wanted to see just to understand by a show of hands who here uses the competency feature in Moodle. Okay. And who thinks it's a bit complicated and would like to use it more maybe? Okay, perfect. So maybe this is the, the right crowd for this. So I will take you through some of our journey that we used uh, for this project. So I'll be talking about Flat6 Labs, which is an incubation acceleration program um, generally uh, located in the Middle East. So our main objective with the platform was to create something that offers the knowledge acquisition, uh, strategic development and business innovation of the different participants. So just to take you through some of these, uh, this journey, uh, entrepreneurs from all over the world join the platform and they get to nurture their business ideas whether they come uh, by themselves and they register as a standalone user or whether they come with a startup already built. They can register on the platform as a, as a group and go through the entire process uh, as a group. So just to explain how we address this objective, the main goal was to create uh, an entrepreneurial framework that will be the backbone of the course creation, evaluation, assessment and how we basically progress and make decisions to enrich the courses uh, later on. So because of this, the standard framework that we created uh, includes 160 competencies. And this is, let's say, the, the skeleton without much meat. Uh, now we have, as I mentioned, the user journey. They can do this uh, either by doing it uh, startup or individuals. I already covered this. And uh, an important part of this uh, journey is that throughout their participation in the system, the learners can always opt in for a coaching session with a mentor. So there are a group of mentors that are not coaches or trainers inside the courses, but that are uh, a third party, let's say, in the user journey. And the way that we integrate them was using competencies as well and learner files that I will cover a bit later. Okay. So as you can see, this is just a small screenshot of the platform. So once you uh, log in, you're able to select your incubation or your growth support. That depends on which status uh, of your startup you have at the beginning of the process. So if you already have a decided idea, you know you can always apply for growth support because you have already a business model, etc. Or if you want to start from the incubation uh, sector, you can also do this. Okay. This is also just to cover some of the locations uh, for the project. We have these eight countries are the main uh, target, but of course uh, users from all over the world are also welcome uh, in this project. Okay. Now we can start on how we actually implemented this. So as I explained, we have first the explorer path, which uh, counts of all 160 competencies. So this is for the learners that say, okay, I'm interested, but I have absolutely no knowledge of entrepreneurial frameworks, of business models, lean canvas design, nothing. So we have one track that based on a pretest that we do at the beginning of the program, we can assess to which path the users are most likely to benefit from. Then we have the navigator. Uh, path, which is for people who already have some knowledge but would like to perfect it, and the captain. The captain only uh, encompasses the more advanced and metacognitive skills uh, for the business uh, knowledge. So here, based on the placement test, learners are uh, distributed across these programs. And for the case of the groups that come with a startup already, they, they don't get sorted as a startup. So it could be that the founder 
is uh, assigned to the captain program, but another team member is assigned to the explorer program. That's also possible because these, uh, these assessments are individual. Okay, and how we are tackling these 160 competencies because it's a lot uh, to do this. Uh, in this case, I, I brought some, uh, a screenshot. I put the English interface, but the competencies are, of course, in Arabic. Um, so for this we have created an action list that includes all the 160 competencies. Here you can see uh, we have, for example, each one of these is a card for one of the learning outcomes. So we have created different plans, have the cards in the desired order. So these don't come from a course one, then course two, course three. There is a very detailed journey uh, that the learners can follow. And not only do they see the competency and their uh, progress in it, so here we can see we have some competent and some not yet competent. Uh, we also show the course that is assigned to this competency and the activity. So that way we can jump directly to the activity from this action list so they don't have to go look for these uh, in order to progress through their programs since some of them are quite, quite large. Okay, and then based on the previous one, this is what I wanted to illustrate that, for example, in this case, we have uh, five different courses, just to explain. One is the starting point. We have also entrepreneurial mindset. We have pillars of entrepreneurial success, marketing, and people and culture. So these are the main courses that we have, but the different learning journeys doesn't uh, mean that they need to take course one, course two, course three. They get to select a specific flow. So it could be that you need to do activity one of course one and then jump to the third course. That way we make sure that the, the flow is ideal and every course has its own um, teacher that can get to edit, etc. That way there is no differences in sharing parts of the course between different uh, teachers. So this is how we create very complex journeys and because the initial skeleton is already created, we can make more than three different paths in the future. We are looking now, I will explain, um, at a dashboard. So now because of this we have created a real-time dashboard that as the learners and the startups go through the different activities, they can see their completion in real time on their Moodle dashboard. That way they know, okay, one to go, uh, I have one, 159 to go. You know, and that kind of keeps the ball rolling and keeps the eye on the goal, which is the overall program to be taken um, in six months, let's say. So because of this, we wanted to create uh, a larger framework. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is just the, the skeleton, but there is already uh, interest in scaling this framework to include 650 competencies. Now that we know the key components, we can enlarge it without risking it being too, uh, too messy in the end. Okay. So now we see that everyone has their own journey assigned to the different paths. And I will explain how we use the learner file, which is um, to include the mentors as well. So as I mentioned, the mentors are not a part of the standard dynamic of a Moodle course. So they are not the teachers, they don't grade their assignments, they just have a one-to-one -one session with the learners or their startups as a group and then they give feedback on their business ideas to nurture what they are already cooking or if they have already some, some roadblocks, they can also help them solve these. The way that we are incorporating this is that the, the mentors can give direct comments on the learner's file that is tied to their specific journey. So when it comes to evaluating the success of the platform, we will have all this information, the activity completion of all the courses, we will have the course grades, any certificates that they have acquired, but also the qualitative um, observations of the mentors, which is also a metric for success uh, in this project. Okay, and um, this is just um, a summary of all the different settings 
and features of Moodle that we have used to, uh, to achieve this. So for example, we have integrations with platforms like HubSpot in the beginning to create um, a more complex uh, registration phase. We have the live dashboards, as I mentioned, uh, to showcase and to keep the eye on the goal for every learner since the project is meant to be taking uh, a long time. We have the restricted access, of course, based on the country or the level the, that the learner has achieved. They get different access to different content. Uh, of course, badges are also a, a very important component. Alongside every competency, there are badges and there are also meta badges that are meant to be uh, milestones for the learner's progress. Thank you. Um, then we have our specific theme. Of course, uh, we have worked on customizations uh, to make it look uh, like it is a cohesive platform despite all of the external components that we have added. Uh, as I mentioned, the competencies are one of the core elements and the learner profiles and groups, of course, for the integration and also for the progress as a startup within the project itself. Okay. I think this is all for me. I was wondering if anyone has any questions. Hi. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is about the competence framework that you have used. And I was wondering uh, whether these 160 competences that you were commenting, they are grouped into, into higher groups, right? So that you can zoom out and zoom in in the reporting. And how have you done it if you have? Yes, exactly. So indeed, uh, this was a conjoint effort with uh, the program team. Uh, so in this case, we have grouped them, as I mentioned, in these different uh, categories. But even within these, so we have the course level um, categories, then we have the, the activity level, but each activity also has different levels of different types. So for example, behavioral competency, cognitive competency, and if there is any kind of um, practical and demonstrable uh, aspect, this is what is also assessed by the mentors. So there is these, these different levels. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, thank you very much. This was very interesting. I was wondering um, if you're using learning plans at all together with the competency frame, is this like the way the, the learner sees it? Um, yeah, maybe you can explain. Yes, uh, indeed. So as you see now, what we are doing is creating different learning plans to report at different levels. So I think both questions kind of inform one another because as a learner, we wanted to give the focus on the actionable points. So anything that the learner sees is because there is an activity or a course assigned to it. You know, they should not be able to see the meta level competencies because these are granted based on the completion of these. But we have also learning plans that are meant to focus on the courses. So for example, learners can also see one out of five when it comes to the courses. So they can basically inform themselves or also a behavioral module only or a cognitive module only. This allows us to be quite flexible when creating these dashboards. Okay, thank you.